Welcome to the Sober Bliss Podcast, bringing you hints, tips, advice and inspiration as you walk your path to living a rich and full, alcohol-free life. Discover why sobriety is the most loving gift of self-care and self-love and how you can feel empowered and joyous with your choice to live the abundant life of alcohol freedom that you deserve. I'm Gail MacDonald, coach, teacher, mum and tea drinker, living a life of alcohol freedom and I'm here to help you to transform your relationship with alcohol in a way that feels good so you can live the life you deserve without alcohol holding you back. Hello, hello and welcome to this week's podcast with me, Gail from Sober Bliss. I really hope that today's podcast will reach your ears just in time for the end of January. If you are indeed doing dry January and are coming to the end of your 30 days of being alcohol free. So I'm just going to jump right in here and say that if you have been doing dry January, and I do hate that word by the way, and if you want to know why, listen to the podcast I did about why January doesn't have to be dry. But yeah, if you are coming to the end of an alcohol-free month, I really want you to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Because honestly, the best is yet to come. And if you're on the fence, if you're maybe just starting out or wondering, maybe I should give this whole sobriety a go, then the next 100 days, and I have to say that 100 days is a really great milestone to aim for. Um, yeah, those these next 100 days are going to involve some of the worst and some of the best times of your life. And I just want to be clear that, you know, when we stop drinking, life isn't magically fixed. I had some of the worst days during my first three months of sobriety or my first 100 days, but also some of the best days, some of the most beautiful moments and wonderful experiences. So it is swings and roundabouts, ups and downs. And I think if you can go into this and accept that and not expect it to be a wonderful, amazing time, but at the same time, not expect it to be awful either, then I think that is really going to help you. And it will help you to make your first 100 days of sobriety as, as awesome as possible. And I want to just share with you here something that one of my clients sent to me. And I suppose this is a testimonial in some respects about my coaching, a shameless plug here. Um, but it does show what can happen in your first 100 days or three months. And this lovely lady said to me, you never know quite what will happen when you take alcohol out of the equation. And in my case, life fell apart. I couldn't have asked for a better, wiser or more compassionate companion. Gail was there every step of the way. Big stuff, small stuff, all of it. She's human and funny. And she taught me to love tea. So I suppose the first thing that I will say, you know, is don't have any expectations. Don't assume that life will be sunshine and raises, raises, rainbows, because it probably won't be, not at first anyway. Now that probably doesn't sound like a very good advert for sobriety, but honestly, and I know this is a cliche, but sobriety is the gift that just keeps on giving. The longer 
we are alcohol free, you know, the more sober time we have under our belt, then the better it gets. It really does. Which is another point I'd like to make quickly. You know, if you are doing dry January, then please don't think that, you know, if I've got to the end of the month without having a drink, then I've cracked it. Because a month is really not long enough. Which is why um, my coaching is three months long and which is why 100 days is actually a much better milestone because a lot happens in those 100 days, much more than you can experience in a month. So when we first stop drinking, we can expect some really big changes. And as I said, most of those will happen in the first 100 days or round about, you know, the three months. Not that much will happen after a month. I don't think a month is long enough to give yourself time you know, physically, mentally and emotionally to adjust. And it is important to allow yourself that time before you make any decisions around the future. Because so much can and does happen in 100 days or around about three months. Um, One month is simply not long enough. And you can listen to my podcast on don't do sober October to learn more about that. So yeah, most of the major changes happen in around about the first 100 days. Obviously the physical symptoms and the the cravings will be the things that you notice first and they are probably the things that you will worry about the most either before you stop drinking or in the very you know early days of not drinking and you might experience a whole range of physical and you know emotional symptoms to varying degrees and intensity so things like anxiety you might feel your anxiety increase or in my case it actually decreased but I didn't really notice that until a good couple of months in I suddenly realized that I wasn't feeling anxious anymore because of course the alcohol makes the anxiety and the depression a lot worse So you might feel more anxiety, less anxiety. You might get um, the shakes, tremors, headaches. I remember I had a headache for quite a while. Um, You could feel sick. Um, You might be grumpy or irritable. You might be emotional, um, sad. And you might lurch, you know, from one extreme emotion to the other. From euphoria to darkness within hours. Or you might experience the whole range of emotions in a single day, which is a bit like the weather in Scotland, actually, all the seasons in a single day. So you might experience everything all at once. And that can be quite a shock, especially the physical symptoms. You know, it can feel like you've got a permanent hangover for the first week or so. Um, And then you might be thinking, well, what's the point? (laughs) I thought I was supposed to feel amazing and I don't. What's the point? Um, And the point is that your body is healing. The point is that you are getting rid of the alcohol. So you might be um, detoxing. You're probably suffering withdrawal. Even if you weren't a massive drinker, you know, there will still be alcohol in your system to, to be removed. And it's going to take time for everything to come back into balance again. So you have to allow it to. Um, Remember, you know, that we've been numbing out with alcohol, enhancing the highs and trying to rid ourselves of the lows with a poison, basically, for so long. So that when you do stop, putting that poison into your body when we do allow things to happen naturally it's going to be hard at times it's going to feel strange it's going to be difficult um and it might be a bit of a shock 
<clears throat> so the first thing I would say, you know, on how to make your first 100 days of sobriety awesome, maybe not awesome, even manageable, is to be very, very kind and gentle with yourself. Show yourself as much love and kindness as you can. I remember that for the first two months of my sobriety, the first two months out of my 100 days, I sat on the sofa and ate cake. You've probably heard me say that many times um, because that's what I did. That's what I needed to do. I was uh, all over the place, really, mentally. Um, I couldn't concentrate on anything at all and all I wanted to do was to sit and eat cake drink tea and walk the dog from time to time I couldn't really make any decisions I don't think I started writing the blog for Sober Bliss until six eight months roughly um and my evenings were spent on the sofa watching uh, The Killing it's a Danish like crime detective series that my brother had sent over actually in a dvd so we watched that in danish with the subtitles eating cake and drinking tea and that's what my first couple of months were like and it was incredibly boring but it was also exactly what i needed because as i said i was a bit all over the place um and i was in a state of well you know i just don't know what to do with myself so whether, you know, the White Stripes song or the Dusty Springfield version pops into your head, that was me. I would wander around picking things up and then put them down again. I would go into a room to do something and forget what I'd gone in there for. I pared down everything. So everything was basic and simple. And I gave myself, you know, as little to do as possible, except for the basics. You know, sometimes I couldn't form proper sentences. I was a bit forgetful and basically wandering around in a bit of a daze. Uh, and I'm really sorry <laughs> if this sounds awful. <laughs> it's honestly, I'm not trying to put you off. But I'm just trying to be honest. It was awful at times and it was boring. But it was still far, far better than the alternative I think I started to feel calm and content and at peace for the first time in a long time so while the kind of things I've described don't sound very appealing it's pretty normal so if you are experiencing any of this please know that it is so normal and it will get better so actually, I'd like you to tell me if you are somewhere within those first 100 days, let me know what you are experiencing right now, uh, what you're going through, how you're feeling and how you're coping. Um, and I don't want you to be put off with everything that I've just said. You know, I don't want you to think, blimey, is it really worth it? Because it absolutely is. And in the whole scheme of things, it's 100 days. It's three months. What's that? Out with the rest of your life? Nothing. It really is nothing. And you know, I can say from my own experience that almost four years on from deciding that I wasn't going to drink anymore, it is absolutely worth it. And while sometimes you will find it dull and boring and hard and sapped and annoying you will also find it inspiring and wonderful and beautiful and joyful. You will surprise yourself. And I think you will be surprised by life, you know, the big things and the small things. And you can only really get to experience life in the way that it's supposed to be experienced when you are not numbing out and hiding and dulling everything with alcohol so yeah 
I know that I haven't painted a very nice picture of the first 100 days, but as I said, in the whole scheme of things, it's absolutely nothing. And if you can get through the first 100 days, which you absolutely can, then honestly, you can get through anything. And I just want to say here about, you know, 100 days, it is an important milestone. It is something that many people strive to achieve. It's like, gosh, if I can get to 100 days, then, you know, that's it. I've cracked it. It's going to be amazing. Um, And it is. But I would say that in order to really enjoy sobriety, be happy about what you're doing, then don't kind of give yourself a goal that has to be reached and then you're kind of like "Mm, I'm not quite sure what to do after that think of them as milestones you know achievements along the way because this is a life style choice you know it's a lifelong decision Um, and there will be many you know blocks of 100 days along the way and I want you to think about the counting of days also maybe I can do a whole episode about counting the days um, because I think it's important to be comfortable in everything that we do with our you know sobriety including do we measure it do we count it Um, we know what do we focus on For example, um, I didn't really count the days except for maybe the first, I don't know, month perhaps. And then I kind of forgot and stopped writing the numbers in my diary. I do have a bit of, I don't know if this is the right word, I do find counting very stressful but I do tend to want to count things a lot which just sounds a bit weird I, I count the tiles on the floor if I'm just sitting watching the tv I'll look at the floor and I'll count the number of squares that I can see in front of me on the floor um I count the number of times a pattern is like repeated on the curtain or my jumper or whatever stupid things like if I'm waiting for the kettle to boil, I'll count or I'll try to count how many chickpeas there are in the jar, how many knives are on the, you know, the metallic strip thing that you have in the kitchen wall. There's supposed to be nine, by the way, and they're supposed to all be facing the same way. I do tend to count a lot of things, like how many minutes between, I don't know, five o'clock and half past seven, or I, I don't know why I focus on counting but I don't like it and I do find it quite stressful. So I didn't religiously count the days as such. Right now, for example, I'm not smoking. I stopped smoking on the 1st of January and that's the only reason why I know that it is day 26 now because I'm not writing the numbers down in my diary. And the same with my sober days. I think I wrote in my diary, you know, number one, then the next day number two with a little smiley face and then the next day number three every day that I kind of remembered and in the beginning I do have to say it was really uh, helpful empowering it was a bit of a motivation to see actually just how far I come and when I wrote the first you know 10 days and then 20 it was like oh wow this is amazing I'm doing so well but I gradually weaned off counting the days I suppose you could say um I would forget as I said and maybe go two or three days and not write it down and actually round about day 70 something um I realized that I hadn't written anything down for ages so I had to go back and fill in all the missing numbers that I'd missed so that was quite stressful as well Um, And to be honest, I didn't really know exactly when my 100 day was coming up and it did pass me by. I think I noticed um, on day 102 or day 103, something like that. Um, And I did write 
my very first blog post on Sober Bliss about my first 100 days. And in the post, I talked about, you know, the counting of days. And I mentioned what Jason Vale wrote in his book, Kick the Drink Easily. Um, I didn't enjoy that book. I didn't finish it. But I do know that it's very helpful for many people. Uh, but I did like what he said about, you know, Nen Nelson Mandela and um, his, you know, when he was released from his prison. And Jason Vale says in his book, at what point did Nelson Mandela realize he was free from his imprisonment? It was, of course, the very first day he was let out of prison. And for me, the first day that I woke up and decided that I wasn't going to drink, I suppose that was when I felt, you know, that freedom was waiting for me. I suppose that was when I felt that my life could begin again. And apart from the early, early days, I didn't want to focus on the counting and the numbers. I didn't want to have to think, oh, how many days has it been? I just wanted alcohol to be irrelevant and something that just wasn't in my life anymore. And that's kind of what I did. I focused on other things. I focused on what I wanted to do and how I wanted to feel. And, um, and that's where I still am today. I've got no idea how many days. I've been alcohol free for and I really I don't want to think about it because it will stress me out I think I might have to go and look at you know type in how many days between um March 28th 2018 and today to find out how many days so do think about that do think about if you want to count the days or not and and why for some people it's very motivational and there are apps obviously that will count the days for you just make sure that you know if you do slip up on the way to 100 days you don't use that or see that as being demoralizing or you know that you lose your motivation somehow because I think the whole process the whole journey is the important thing not the number of sober days that we can string together but saying that obviously today's podcast is on the topic of our first 100 days so let me help you try to make the first 100 days of sobriety awesome if that's the word that really ties in with it yeah how can you enjoy your first 100 days of sobriety so in no particular order of when to do these things or you know no one thing is more important than the other these are some of the things that helped me get through my first 100 days and also some tips that I would like to share with you and the first thing I think I've said that for about six times now so six first things to focus on is um the positive and I probably you know you know that I was going to say that because I say it all the time do focus on the positive do focus on just how amazing you feel when you I don't know go to bed sober or wake up sober or get through a craving and not give in and all the things that you're gaining all the things that you're gaining and never dwell on what you think you might be giving up or missing out on now it's obviously important to acknowledge and accept any difficult emotions that we will go through and we will go through quite a lot but and don't squash them down or bat them away but you know and this is something that I help you with in the coaching because emotions will pop up and bite you on the bum sometimes um so don't squash them down however it's important to try and look for the good 
in everything and appreciate the small things like I said how good it feels to wake up sober how good it feels to get into bed knowing that you didn't drink that day and that you will um more or less have a good sleep and we'll come to that in a moment um how good it is to you know I don't know read a book and not have to reread the same line 100 times um how good it feels to not have to pop paracetamol when you first get up in the morning how good it feels to be able to tuck your kids in at bedtime how good it feels to go for a walk just because you want to go for a walk and not have to rush back because you're missing valuable drinking time make a list of all the good things that you experience every single day whether it's just how great your coffee tastes or um how calm you feel in the when you're in the bath you know have that list keep gathering that evidence because that's going to help you when things get a little bit tricky um and i think i s- kind of said this at the beginning as well uh, expect and accept that things won't always be as I said sunshine and rainbows and roses things will be difficult at times but if we can accept that then it's not such a shock and we're not going to immediately blame the fact that we're not drinking on things going wrong so go with the flow as much as you can and live in the moment as much as possible don't worry about things that may or may not happen in the future one of my gorgeous clients who I worked with over um, October November December um, had a lot of thoughts running through her mind all the time and it was quite stressful eventually you know we would there would be something that she'd been worrying about that actually because of COVID or whatever didn't happen in the end. So all of this worry and stress about things that may or may not happen or worrying about some distant point in the future like Christmas or the wedding that you're going to go to in four months time or the holiday that you've booked next year you know, by the time those things roll around, you'll be in a completely different place to where you are now. So please don't waste any time worrying about it now. It's just going to make you very stressed. And you might find that you may even talk yourself out of what you're doing because of some distant event in the future that you can't imagine not drinking at, you know. Um, so just don't think about it we will get to that bridge you know we'll cross that bridge when we get to it there's no point in worrying about something that may or may not happen further down the line okay and also know that anything that you are experiencing any any thoughts yeah any difficult emotions any cravings in particular they won't last forever and the things that you are doing now for example if you are coming home from work going straight in the shower and putting your pajamas on and getting into bed you won't have to do that forever either so don't think that gosh it's such hard work now or um, am I really going to have to do x y and z for the rest of my life no you're just doing the best you can right now to get through this particular period of time. I used to be very religious in having lunch, then either going straight out for a walk or having a nap. And I did that, you know, every single day for quite a while. But I don't do that anymore. So don't worry if, you know, you think the thing that you're doing now is going to be the thing that you have to do forever because it's not and at the same time be open and try all the things if you really don't know what to do at wine o'clock then 
write a list and try anything. Colouring in, painting by numbers, uh, knitting, walking, sea swimming, meditation, reading a book, reading a magazine, playing the guitar, learning a language, um, I don't know, playing Twister, cleaning the cupboards, hosing down the wheelie bins, you know, whatever it might be, just give it a go um, and try things out. And also try and plan in some activities with other people, other sober people, if you are lucky enough to have that in your area. Because having that contact with people, having that planned in kind of structure to your week is really, really helpful because it gives you something to focus on, something to look forward to. And it is kind of that accountability as well which is another thing that I'd like to say get support whatever that looks like for you I was so lucky in that my husband stopped the day before I did so I had in-house support and accountability and that is why I do what I do partly you know it's coaching but partly it is just accountability and one of my clients told me that she loved having the the twice weekly sessions. You know, it was like an anchor at two points in the week of having someone to be accountable to. And it made it easier for her to be accountable to herself. Having to show up for somebody helped this particular client and helps other clients as well show up for themselves. And that's what people tell me when we work together, that having the support, having the coaching, having the accountability makes such a big difference. Actually, it makes it different from all the times that they may have tried in the past. And it does make the whole process so much easier. So that is why um, my coaching is at least three months. I don't offer coaching for any less than that which is about 100 days. Um, so I am there to fully guide and support you through the most important time of your life. It also makes the first 100 days so much easier, dare I say it, more fun and more inspiring. One of my clients sends me lovely messages like, love today's session or... Wow, I'm feeling really motivated and today's Zoom was amazing. And I think you'll agree if you've got somebody there like me to help you through those first 100 days and somebody there who will help you feel motivated and inspired, then it's a pretty good way to spend your first 100 days of sobriety. Um. So think about that, you know, hire a coach, hire a therapist if you need to join uh, the Facebook groups, join the local groups, surround yourself with people who will be there to guide you and support you 100% in what it is that you want to do. And I think it's also important to say here that you have to ask yourself, why exactly are you doing this? Not because you have to or you can't drink again. I don't think that is a very nice place to come from. It might actually be true, but deep down, you really ought to think about your compelling why, I suppose the real reason why you want to be alcohol free and again when we work together it's one of the first things that we focus on and I have some really powerful journaling questions and prompts to help you with that basically you want your why to be so strong so compelling um, that drinking will spoil it for you Drinking will ruin your reason for living alcohol-free. Your why has to be 
you know, 100 times, 1000 times even more powerful than any alcoholic drink. You have to weigh, you know, them both up and decide which one is more important to me as I move forward with my life. And your why has to win over the drink every single time. And there are ways that you can figure out your why, as I said, through the coaching questions that I give you when we work together. And also, um, it's really helpful to connect to your why as often as you possibly can. And I've talked about this before. One of my favorite ways to connect to the reason for doing this is to visualize yourself living alcohol free in the way that you want to live. Um, you know, what do you want? How do you want to feel? That's the most important thing. And focus on that. This is so powerful and you know it is one of the first things that we do when we work together and there's a really good reason for that because when you can connect to the emotions uh, of what it means to live alcohol free then the thought of drinking the idea of drinking just doesn't come into it because it's going to ruin what it is that you want to do so visualize yourself living alcohol free and how it feels there is a podcast on using visualization which i'll leave the the link to in the show notes so you can um have a little practice at that and let me know how you get on um so what else yeah i would fully commit also to these 100 days so forget about moderation forget about you know Will I or won't I make the decision that for the next 100 days, I am not going to drink? That's what I did. I didn't say 100 days. I just said, that's it. I'm not drinking no matter what. Um, And it made everything just so much easier. It was a huge weight of my mind. And it was a huge freedom and peace of mind knowing that I just made that decision and that was it. I didn't have to make it again. And yes, you've guessed it. I'm going to share the Michael Jordan quote with you. And he said, once I made a decision, I never thought about it again. And that is what worked for me. So make that decision, even if it's for the next 100 days and write it down stick it on a bit of paper and put it on the wall or repeat it to yourself you know for the next 100 days I will not drink no matter what and then you can begin to work on the other things that come with sobriety so managing cravings managing emotions um, filling the void discovering who you are and focus on the treat I think it is you know such a big part of our lives the idea that alcohol is a treat it's a reward it comes with fun it comes with celebration and often that is the hardest thing to um to navigate one of the wonderful women that worked with us in the Christmas um coaching the magical AF Christmas experience she said, you know, I don't drink if I'm stressed or if I'm lonely or angry. For me, I drink when I'm happy. I drink because I want to treat and a little pick me up and to feel good. So in order to make your first 100 days of sobriety feel good, you have to make the effort to to feel good, basically. Uh, so that involves treating yourself often. So don't feel guilty about eating the cake or the crisps. Don't feel guilty about the once a week, I don't know, cinema visit or trip to the museum or the daily hour long soak you have in the bath or the fancy, I don't know, candle that you buy every Friday. It really doesn't matter. And it's actually super important to 
fill your life, fill your days, fill yourself with things that you love and make you happy and bring you joy. Because that is really what living alcohol free is. It is a life of happiness and joy. And the more you can keep reinforcing this fact, the more you can keep focusing on, you know, the idea that you're actually not missing out on anything because look at all these wonderful things that I'm doing, look at how amazing I feel, that is what's going to help you. Um, so maybe put away the money, you know, that you would otherwise be spending on alcohol and use that to treat yourself. Treat yourself often um, and don't feel guilty about it at all. You want to make yourself the most important thing during the first 100 days and beyond actually Um, and it's going to take practice making yourself your project (laughs) is probably something that we're not used to doing we are used to being at the bottom of the list you know last in line um, tending to everybody else's needs before ours and we have to switch it up when we are going alcohol free you have to focus on yourself which is not easy but it's so important so the first 100 days is a time to mother yourself it's time to say no it's time to you know get really clear on your boundaries it's time to lie on the sofa and watch netflix if you have to remember that we are undoing and changing behavior, um, behavior patterns that have been ingrained in us for so long. And that takes time and patience. And it's not going to be easy. And you do have to make an effort to show up for yourself. You do have to do things that maybe you don't want to do or that feel weird or you complain about in order to break the pattern. We do have to repeat and practice in order for this new behavior to become the the normal behavior so in everything that I've said I do think really the best advice that I can give you in order to make your first 100 days either awesome or lovely or just manageable is to be really kind and gentle with yourself and give yourself the time and the space you need to really heal and to get to know yourself again Um, because there will be parts of you that you know will have disappeared altogether and it's during those first hundred days that we begin to find ourselves again and I don't mean that in a kind of you know airy fairy woo woo hippie kind of way it's the truth you know alcohol strips us of so much and the first 100 days three months is a time when we can begin to get back to ourselves again and it takes patience it takes kindness and it takes love so do that for yourself honestly the first 100 days is a time when we need to do what feels good do what feels right whatever that looks like make yourself your priority so tell people what you're doing or don't tell people get a therapist or not hire a coach or join a facebook group as i said before join a local group Um, journal meditate eat cake go swimming read write talk cry run, listen to the podcasts, read all the books, count the days, don't count the days, drink tea or drink water or alcohol-free beers, you know, go to bed early, have naps, get up late, Um, go to bed late, get up early, you know, whatever feels good to you, whatever helps, do that and make no apologies for it. I remember that if you are struggling and if you do need any support or accountability and you can't get that in your 
you know local area or with the people around you then I do have spaces on my three month or six month one-to-one coaching programs so book a chat below Uh, I leave the link in the show notes and if you want more information about that because I really want to help you make your first 100 days awesome I really really do and prepare you for more days of alcohol-free awesomeness if that is a word um so do reach out if you need help do let me know if you've enjoyed this podcast do let me know where you are right now on your journey and how your 100 days are or were I'd love to be able to share your experiences with other people so do subscribe to this podcast if you liked it um share it with people who you think might need to hear it right now and get in touch if you need more support and that's it from me for today have a lovely lovely day and I will see you next week bye for now thank you so much for listening if you enjoyed this episode then please share and subscribe for more help and support go to the sober bliss website soberbliss.com connect with me on social media and learn how I can help you quit drinking and start living